With a simple Google search of Bitmoji, it will bring you to their home page. Here, you can explore the different ways a Bitmoji can be used. At the bottom, when you click Bitmoji for Chrome Desktop, you'll be able to add it as an extension. Mine has already been added. So up in the corner, when I click Bitmoji, it will open up to my personalized one I have already created. Here, you can search and scroll for different ones, or at the top, you can put something in, such as book. When you click on it, all you have to do is right click and copy image. And then you are able to put it in to anywhere you would need it. The only downfall I have found about the Bitmoji icon is that you have to have the Snapchat application to be able to edit and change your style. Once you have downloaded the application, it's not necessary to have any of the extras such as adding friends or even using the application. Instead, you can use it simply to edit your Bitmoji. When you do so, in the extension tab in Google Chrome, it will automatically update to whatever you have changed it to. Once you have found your Bitmoji and decided on what they will look like, the process of adding it to any of your documents is super easy. Again, you go up to that extension and click the Bitmoji. You can search for anything. If I search for library, they have already added in some super cute bitmojis. Any questions? I can search for book and add in anything. For the younger kids, something like this could be super cute. And for our older kids, Something as simple as this might work. Absolutely love the Bitmoji because not only is it a fun and creative thing for me to do, it gives a fresh face and allows students to really feel like they are interacting with a person. When you first start off, there is simply a blank slide in Google Slides that you're working with. You can choose to insert your own background in items or choose a pre-made template from other online resources. When you go up to insert an image, you go to choose from web. I searched for virtual classroom background as an example. When you find one you like, you simply insert it and adjust it to fit your slide. This one in particular already has everything that you would need, a screen, chairs, and you could add in other items. For example, if I wanted to add in a laptop, and place it on the table, I could do so. Unfortunately, this doesn't look like it would match very well. So instead of choosing real life photos to stick with the more creative and fun cartoon looking ones, like this. As you can see, Everything in here has been individually added. The amount of time put into this is extraordinary, but the end is amazing.
I believe that one of the most important parts of the whole Bitmoji virtual library is that home page. It's going to be the first thing that your kids, parents, and other teachers see. Here, you see a smiling face, a welcoming environment, and links from the start. Here, I linked my own voice. Welcome to the Kempner High School Virtual Library. When you click here, it takes you to the Kempner High School Library homepage that we showed earlier. And here, we'll take you to the Twitter page. Right now, I'm not in presentation mode, so that's why they're not opening. But the moment I press present, when I click on these, it will open up to a brand new tab. So here's how it'll look. The moment you click the home page, it brings you straight to the original website I showed you. When you go back, it brings you to the Twitter page as well. My virtual library will include links to resources for research and informational purposes, such as Destiny Discover, Britannica, Gale, and EBSCO. This page has the most frequented resources, but I will also have an option to choose the clipboard, which will open you back up to the home page to give a full list of resources offered by Fort Bend ISD. I think having specific ones on the virtual library is easier because when you tend to get a list as long as this one, it can be slightly overwhelming. So as soon as it's put into presenter view, The moment the student chooses the resource that they would like, it will automatically open it up to said resource. They're able then to toggle back, choose another resource, or go ahead and open up that full list. Another page includes a list of genres with links to popular and highly rated Goodreads lists of said genre, ranging in Lexile, publication date, diversity, and age group. So, for example, if I were to click graphic novels, it would bring me over to the Goodreads page with over 322 highly ranked graphic novels. This goes for all of the different genres here. This is great for our reluctant readers or readers that are not quite sure what to choose with the opportunity to click and bring yourself to a link of different options it will truly get those reluctant readers and readers who aren't quite sure what to choose thinking of course linking it to goodreads is not your only option you can link it to reading incentive programs or even to your own catalog or online database to show what books you have in the library. But if you're just trying to get their mind jogging, they could potentially find a book that they really, really want to read on Goodreads, and you can then check your library database. If 
by chance you don't have the book available, that's when you could look into an interlibrary loan or potentially adding it to your collection. If that's not a choice, this would also be an excellent time to link up with one of the community librarians to see if they have the book in their database.